Hello, and welcome to the second episode of John and Rochelle. Thankfully, uh, Rochelle is able to join us this episode, but unfortunately, it won't be in person. It's going to be over the phone. Say hi. Hi. Uh, so, this is our, like I said, our second episode, and we actually have some good topics to talk about today. It was actually my birthday on uh, July 3rd. Woohoo! Mm. <laughs> and uh, we went and saw Transformers 3. And I have to say, it was actually pretty good. What did you think of it, Rochelle? Epic. Yeah, it was the Michael Bay definitely knows how to make explosions. Yeah, especially like the background and just the effects, and you know, it was intense. What was your favorite part? I would have to say when they were uh, jumping out of the building and uh, parachuting down to. Yeah, they were like almost like little, uh, what they call those like flying raccoon, flying squirrels, or what do they call them? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, there's some kind of like flying chickmunk or something that uh, can glide on the air from tree to tree. Oh, yes. I thought you were talking about the actual parachute. No. Um, yes, there is a flying squirrel. Yes, I thought so. Um, so what was your least favorite part? I would have to say the very beginning, seeing her ass. I didn't see how that really... Um, brought Transformers uh, into uh, a great, I don't know, I just didn't see it as a very good beginning. Yes, I'm a girl, and whatever, you know, like we see other girls and bras, whatnot, I don't care, but I paid to go see a movie of robots and them killing stuff, not a girl's ass at the very beginning staring directly at me. Yes, I agree. That's just me. (laughs) I kind of feel the same way. I find Michael Bay, he's really good at um, making girls look almost like cars. You know, they're, he tries to make it seem like they're, you know, they're not people in a way. I agree. Uh, so my favorite part uh, was probably when that giant snake robot was climbing up the building. Yeah, I thought that was creepy, actually, but um, I'm afraid of snakes, so... <laughs> hopefully people were not spoiling anything here for you, but... Uh, uh, we're going to try not to have any spoilers here, so we're not going to try and talk anything that's, you know, plot related or anything that's, uh, you know, essential to enjoying the movie. Um, mm-hmm. But then talking about Michael Bay, there's not too much plot involved. <laughs> I thought the movie was OK. Um, I I went to I, I go to Transformers movies. I don't go there for story. I don't go there for drama. I go there to watch things that blowing up. Right. You go there to watch big, big robots fighting each other. I mean, exactly. and no one does it better than Michael Bay, so. But yeah, I thought it was okay. If I had to uh, give it a ranking, I'd probably give it uh, a 7 out of 10. How about you? I'd probably say, like, maybe an 8, 8 and a half. Um, it, it, it had me, like, uh, just captivated by everything that was going on, and uh, there were some people that said that it was, like, all over the place, but I really didn't see that. I think they were a little too critical. But yeah. then again, with movies that don't have, like, a massive plot, you can't have high expectations. Yeah, exactly. It's Michael Bay. What can you exactly. say? Exactly. <laughs> but yes, I, I agree with you. Like, I didn't feel it was all over the place either. I felt it was actually pretty well pretty well uh, cut, pretty well yeah. edited. So that's yeah. for the Transformers review. And um, all right, so next topic we got are why do bugs like to crawl in your mouth and why do they like to fly in your eyes? So, uh, Rochelle, uh, tell me about this. What, uh, what, uh, what made you want to talk about this topic? <laughs> well, to be brutally honest, that happened to me on the way back from work. <laughs> ah, okay. It was really irritating the heck out of me. Here I am, just minding my own business. Not to mention the mosquitoes are just attacking me left, right, and center. They must love my blood. But here I am, just mind my own business and I had literally like five bugs try and fly right into my eye and then I saw motorcyclists go by and I'm like man they must have to keep their mouth shut a lot unless they really like protein I know gross but come on you uh, know yeah it's pretty nasty um, so yeah that's the main reason why I was like well let's talk about this because I wanted to know what everybody else thought and hey if you like bugs in your eyes go right ahead Nothing Please leave us. You. If you like to eat bugs, leave us a comment. We want to know. Yeah. We want to know who you are, where you are. You know, do they taste you know, good? You know, come on now. Maybe, maybe you're like Screech off of Saved by the Bell. If you ever watched that, where you know. Oh, I love like Saved by the Bell. Over bugs. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I said maybe you're like Screech 
where you like to eat the candy covered bugs and save by the bell. Who knows? But I used to have a teacher comment. that said she used to eat chocolate covered ants. Oh, wow. Whatever. It's still gross. She used to tell me that she used to eat chocolate, chocolate covered ants and, uh, um, yeah, <laughs> that's about the, the length of the story right there. That's really gross. But tell hey, me about more it. protein, I guess. Power to you, right? So, yeah, I got to say that bugs in your mouth and bugs bugs in the eye are bad enough, but bugs in your mouth, that's just too far. Yeah. That really it's like, shoe fly, me. don't bug ah, me. Ha, ha, ha. What? I said, that really bugs me. Ah, oh, good one, good one. I know, uh, you're, you're, sh- you're the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, all right, so uh, let's move on to our next topic, which is the Royals. And if you don't know, both re- me and Rochelle, we live in Calgary, Alberta. And within a couple of days, the, the Royals, uh, Will and Kate, are actually going to be here in town. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, part of my day tomorrow, I'm going to try and line up at the Max Bell Center. Uh, if you don't know where that is or if you're just interested, you know, research that online. You can find out where the Max Bell Center is in Calgary. Um, and that's where I'm going to be tomorrow. Uh, let's see if I can get a bracelet and see if I can uh, see if me and Rochelle can meet Will and Kate. How do I feel about it? Uh, how do I feel about the Royals? It's tradition, you know. Um, they've been around for centuries. I don't think they're going anywhere. You know, people like tradition. People like old fashion. Uh, and that's what the, that's what the Royals are all about. That's what the Royals are. That's that's why they're still there because people like tradition. Um, how do you feel about it, Rochelle? Well, I also think that they are. Um a good object, so so to speak, to uh, to look at for young people for relationship wise. Showing like even though um, like William and Kate went through so much, they managed to stick together. Um, no one will always like no one will know the complete story of why they broke up so many times and all that. But the main thing is that they loved each other enough to stay together. And to me, that's something that young people today and older should look at and realize that, like, everyone does have the same issues, and not everybody is different, you know. And um, I think it's great that they're coming to Calgary just to show that, you know, they actually see us and they care, you know. And, um, yeah, actually, I'm really looking forward to seeing them. You know, obviously, I can't shake their hands, but... You know, just Wouldn't it be awesome to be able to get a picture and put it on Facebook? Um, well, my camera kind of sucks, so I might have to try, but I'm not promising anything. <laughs> we might have uh, some uh, pictures for our next video, guys, so cross your fingers and let's hope to our next topic. Uh, we are going to talk about the, the Casey Anthony case, and uh, today she was actually uh, pronounced not guilty for... Uh, first degree murder and child abuse, but she was guilty on lying to police, um, which I find, you know, uh, I haven't really paid too much attention to the case, but I hear there's a lot of evidence pointing towards that she was guilty and that the defense just wasn't really able to just tie it all together, or not the defense, um, the, you know, the, um, what do you call it in America? Because I know it's not the crown, so do you know what you call it? No, but th- I'm sure people understand what you mean. Yeah, so, anyways, uh, yeah, they weren't able to tie it all together. They weren't able to, you know, prove it that she actually, you know, committed murder. Um, which, you know, maybe she didn't. I don't know. Maybe it's just really strange coincidences which led to this. Uh, why did she lie to police? You got me. Um, but, obviously, they were able to prove that she was guilty in the murder charge. So, what do you think about that? I think she is, well, a pathological liar, to be brutally honest. Um, I could be wrong, but from evidence and from her lying to the police, to me, that's guilty. And in the first place, if you, if you didn't do anything to this child of yours, and all of this happened by accident or however, you know, like, why would you lie to the police, first off, when they're trying to help you? Um... I just, I have very mixed feelings about this case. I can't say that, you know, like, she's a murderer or whatnot, but from what I've heard 
on the news and from hearing from like uh, the defense lawyers like against her um, everything's pointing at her and I just I guess in a way that's why system sucks in a way because even like using for example there's this one woman unfortunately I don't remember her name off the top of my head now where she was in jail for such a long time and they found out that she was actually innocent like what does that say about our system like to me um, I am kind of worried and appalled that she got away with it and if she's innocent then you know I'll do her and I'm happy for her but from what I've heard it's not yeah, I've also... That's the thing, like, why would she go on for a month without even acknowledging that her baby's missing? I mean, she went missing on, like, June 15th, and then she wasn't pronounced missing until July, like, 16th or something like that. So she went for a whole month where she was just, like, partying it up, you know, hanging with her boyfriend, getting tattoos. This is actually, that like... me. Exactly, See, like... Because if I had a child and she was missing within three days... I would be freaking out, probably two, maybe even one, because a parent always knows where their child is. If not, they, they try and find out. As soon it reminds as me of like those old like TV commercials. Do you know where? It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Where your child is. Exactly. <laughs> and how would you not know your child is like gone for a month? Like, give me a break. Yeah. I just find that really hard to believe and ridiculous. Like, some of the stuff that she said was really far-fetched, and I just don't know if I can believe it. But right now, I'm just going to say, well, you know, I'm happy for you, because really that's all I can say. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure she's probably going to make millions off of this, off of TV interviews, books, oh, movie sure. deal. You know, she's definitely going to be raking in the dough. Yeah. And maybe that will you know, I'm hoping not, but I'm, I'm also worried that now people are just be like, oh, should I do that now? Yeah. Well, that's a lot of people said that she did that? it was because she was trying to get out of being a parent. She just, just given her to, you know, like her a... Mother? Or not, not, just not that, but, you know, a foster agency or something. Uh, yeah, that's one thing I don't understand. It's like, you could have done so many different options. Like, for, for kind of that long, she could have got nanny and, like... Or, like, I got a babysitter for those days where it was just too overwhelming. Like, there were so many different ways for child care or for just adoption. And she just decided against it and doing something horrible instead. And I, I just can't wrap my head around it. I really can't. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's where some, uh, <laughs> where some Tongue -tied, society eh? is just, you know, gone wrong. You know? Like... The crime rate and death in this world is just appalling, and yep. it's, it makes me sad to, to know, like, someone had to do this to their child to, not, like, just to have fun, and, you know, I just don't understand mm, I it. I totally agree. So. All right, well, thank you, Hun, for, uh, for joining me in this uh, second video. And not a problem. And uh, we'll be definitely putting up a new video with it in a week or so. Uh, we hope to see many comments and get many emails and, you know, get many views. We already have a couple of subscribers and a couple of people added to our friends list. And we hope to see many more. And, you know, like I said, if you guys want something to discuss on our show, just send me an email. Yeah, if any, yeah, any, any questions for me and Rochelle, you know, just send us an email, leave us a comment, and, you know, we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. So, um, all right, we want to say goodbye, Rochelle? All right, well, take care, guys. All right, you, and also for me, 